And this is a very important and practical teaching that really fits well with what Pastor Jesse shared in the beginning of the story of the uh, Samaritan woman. Because Jesus was very strategic in his approach with that woman. He was very intentional. He had a plan. And because of that intentionality and plan the purpose of God was accomplished and salvation came not only to that woman but it transformed the whole community and so let's listen very carefully as Tony brings us a message that maybe will transform not only our communities, not only one person's life, not only our ministries, but all of Uganda. Tony? Thank you, Ben. So please, please be seated. So I am excited to share this with you because I think it's a very practical set of steps where we can say, here are our plans. Kyle talked about the problem of, oops, I'm sorry. That's okay. That's okay. Very practical steps on how to create those plans. When Kyle spoke, he said, don't be distracted from your mission. And, you, and don't be distracted from your plans. We also learned this morning from Ben's message that a constant a constant truth is that your plans will change. So the one thing that does not change is that you will have to change. So just a, a couple of words about myself. I have an information technology Career. I worked in technology for 40 years. The last 10, I was the leader of technology for a number of very large companies. In a role as an executive, a business executive, it's critical that we establish our plans. And as I've served on the boards of churches and ministries, the same process applies. What a business is trying to do is trying to win in their marketplace. They do that by making sure that their products are the best. That they meet the needs of their customers. That they serve their customers so that their customers can use their products. 
and they think ahead to plan about what new innovation might Strategic planning is a process that has definitive steps we can follow. That help us to understand what we have to do with our resources. So we all have limited resources. We can't do everything we want. So we have to allocate our limited resources. And to those programs and initiatives and projects that have the most impact for our mission. It's absolutely critical for this ministry to create a strategic plan and then communicate that plan to everyone involved so that the whole team of people are accomplishing the mission. We need to stay focused on that mission. Just, I'm sorry, we need to stay focused on that mission. And not be distracted because since we all know what the mission is and how we're going to accomplish that mission. I'm going to read you the mission statement of serve now. Our, our mission is sharing Christ's passion for the world by serving the most vulnerable through national churches and leaders. So we didn't sit down one day and suddenly decide that was our mission. It was a lot of work. A lot of attention. And mostly prayer and fasting. We've already seen today that if the plan is not from the Lord, it's a plan of man and cannot be successful. So let's, let's go to the next slide. We'll talk through some Bible scriptures about planning. So, Again, let's look at who, who in the Bible has been a successful strategic planner. But uh, I know there's a lot of information on the slide. But let me give you some real good examples from ne, scripture. So let's look at Moses. Moses said, I have way too much work to do. And I don't know how to get it all done. 
the resource that was limited for him was time. So Jethro, his father-in-law, suggested suggested that he instead set up a structure where others could be leaders so that it couldn't be all on Moses. Joshua Joshua sent Kyle into the land to spy on the land to see if he had the resources to take what God was giving him. And God didn't tell Joshua, just take the city. God told Joshua how to do it and it gave him a plan. And we all know how successful that plan was. Nehemiah, he, he found out that the walls of, his sit, of the city of Jerusalem where his ancestors were buried had, that the walls of Jerusalem had collapsed. And I'm going to read from Nehemiah chapter 1. Where Nehemiah set out to start his strategic plan. So in Nehemiah chapter 1. I'll start at the end of verse 3 where Nehemiah was told the wall of Jerusalem lies breached. And its gates have been burned down. And in verse 4 Nehemiah said, When I heard these things, I sat down abruptly. Crying and mourning for several days. I continued fasting and praying before God of heaven. And then I won't read the next verses, but Nehemiah then asks the Lord, Hear my prayer. See what's happened to your city. Help me to rebuild the walls. Later on in the story, Nehemiah, who is a servant to the king, he approaches the king, and the king says, what do you ask? And, and Nehemiah was frightened to answer the king. But scripture said he prayed. And he, what he said to the king I want to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. He didn't make that up. He didn't know that that was what he was going to do before he prayed. But through his prayer, his fasting, he knew what he had to go do. And after he prayed, before the king, the, he asked the king to help him rebuild the wall. Exactly. Mm -hmm. The king was gracious. The Lord moved. And we know how this story ends. The great thing about Nehemiah's plan 
It's a great example in the Old Testament of a strategic plan. He went and he assessed the damage. He counted the cost of rebuilding the wall. He obtained those resources. He developed leadership. He assigned people to do the work. He made sure they did the work. And then when problems arose, he addressed those problems. To accomplish his mission. Praise God. When I look at Serve Now's mission, it aligns perfectly with Kimono Moses and the work that's being done through the church. There are plans. You seek the Lord in prayer and fasting. You define the steps to accomplish your goal. You obtain the resources. And you assign the work. Now you can spend a week sitting like this studying strategic planning. It's a very complex process because a lot of people and lives are involved. So uh, what I'll go through with you after these couple of, next couple of uh, people we'll look at are the practical steps. So another example in the Old Testament is David when he fought Goliath he didn't fight on Goliath's terms. He found a weakness in Goliath. And he did what the Lord tell, told him to do. Even though everyone in Israel thought that wouldn't work. Pastor Jesse mentioned how strategic Jesus was. Jesus had a mission. He said, I did not to condemn the world. I did not come to condemn the world. But I came to save it through Christ. So, so saving the world was his mission. He developed leaders. He told his leaders to go. There were times his leaders went and it didn't work. So he trained his leaders on how to make it work. And those 12 men or 11 changed the world. 
And we are still in the process of accomplishing Jesus' mission. Amen. 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 So it's your job as leaders to establish plans rooted in what the Lord is telling you and as much prayer and fasting as that takes to lay those plans in front of the people so we can be all accomplishing the mission together. Of course, Paul also, he picked strategic cities in which to build churches so that they would have the most influence and the greatest impact in accomplishing the mission of spreading the gospel. So if you go to the next slide, please. There are a number of passages in Proverbs and I picked just a few that talk about how wise it is I assume you how wise it is to make plans and how it's unwise to not make plans. Okay. So I won't read all of these, but I'll leave them for you. So we can appreciate in scripture how important it is to have a plan. And then to be so attentive to the Lord that that you know when he wants you to change. You can go to the next slide. So, I, I'll leave this chart for you. I won't read through it, except to say that there is a very somewhat prescriptive process. That process is surrounded by prayer and fasting. It's important to form a plan. And then do the plan. And there are steps in each. We'll talk a little bit about it. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. So the process for strategic planning, and I'll start by uh, reading a specific proverb. Proverbs, Proverbs 19.21. Many of the plans in a man's heart Excuse me, many are the plans in a man's heart. But is the Lord's purpose that prevails? If you don't commit first, step one, step one, Prayer and fasting. What is the Lord asking you to do to, to accomplish your mission? Scripture says to seek counsel. So you, so you do this together. It's it's 
it's wise to engage all the people to pray and fast together because we know that the Holy Spirit brings unity. Be open to changing your preconceived ideas. Many of us think, think we have the answer to the problem. We, we think we know how to address an opportunity. But so often, the Lord shows us a better way. And Ben said yesterday, sometimes you have to step back before you can step forward. I think of that as as a, when, a, when a challenge arises, it's not it's not a, the word just escaped me. It's not a setback. It's not damaging to our mission. But it's a setup. For the Lord to work how He wants to work. Amen. Amen. Okay, step two. Remember what, what Nehemiah did was he went to Jerusalem. And he looked at what was going on. He looked at the broken wall. He looked at the burned gates. And then he measured the wall. And said, this is how much I need to rebuild. So there are things you may be doing now. That may be not what the Lord wants you to do next year. So it would be it would be less than ideal to just do the same thing over and over. So when you're praying and fasting, you need to evaluate what you're doing today. To, to see if the Lord still wants you to do that next year. Sometimes he says it's fine to continue. Sometimes he says, make it grow. And sometimes he says, stop. So, when we visited the sites this week, we we praise the work that has been accomplished. But we see, you could clap. Right. But we also see how much more needs to be done. A strategic plan. Uh, helps you to make those decisions. Do we build a school? Do we add 
to a church building. Do we publish more education? And there are many more. Just think of all the churches we visited and all the needs that we saw. What of those do we really have to do? What will make the... What will make the most impact? And we make a list. Of all the things we could do. So we make a list. And we make a list. Why is the item important? What will the impact be? And to get that impact, what is the investment required? And that investment is not just money. It's people. Material. Leadership. And other things that we might need. What's been helpful for me. And what's been helpful when I've helped ministries and business. Develop the priorities. And we use a tool. To help us visualize what is the most impact. So on the bottom is the impact. On the left side would be low impact. On the right side is high impact. So your planned projects some will have low some will have high. Or somewhere in between. On the left side of the visual, it's either low investment or it's high investment. Some things, can be, sorry. Some things can be accomplished quickly and easily. And for some it may take a lot of time and effort money. So for instance, if something is high impact, and you want to do a high impact project. But it costs a lot. You say that's a must do project. Maybe you don't finish it right away. Maybe it'll take a long time to finish. But if it's high impact, you'll 
you have to get started. If it's high impact, but low investment, that you must do that now. So by low investment, you have the resources. You have the leadership. You have the material. Do it now. Fits well with serve now. So if there is a project that has low impact, maybe it meets your objectives. Those can be distractions. If they cost a lot, you don't do them. The cost isn't worth the value. And maybe there are some relatively low impact projects. That you can delegate or not do. This will help you prioritize. From that list of potential, to the ones that are the most important. So for each one of those steps, I said that wrong. For each one of those projects that you've prioritized, you need, you need to count the cost. Whether you do that now, or whether the cost is so great you start now. And then step five, you create a timeline. So when, we, so when are we going to do this? Or when are we not going to do it? And many big projects take a long time. We toured a school this week here, here in Kampala that the structure is built but it's not finished. So that's a long-term project that, that will take a long time to get finished. But when it's finished, we have education for young people. And that's a major, major impact. Sometimes, Sometimes you have the resources for a big project. And sometimes you don't. You still dream the dream. You say, here's my dream. Here's a big project that will have great impact. So we're going to go for it. The Lord wants us to start. We need to be obedient. We need to start. 
praying that the Lord will provide the resources by faith. And when those finish, we can give all glory to God. So one of the things I like to say about a plan, they are not the Ten Commandments chiseled in tablets. They're written on paper. Things will change. Like Paul, like Pastor Ben spoke about yesterday, you adjust and adapt. It's a constant process. There will be new needs and new opportunities that the Lord that the Lord brings to your attention. And he will continue to talk to you and lead you in new and different ways. Adjust and adapt. Because they are not a step, a setback. But a setup for the Lord to show his glory. So it's hard when a problem occurs not to be upset in your heart. But through prayer and fasting the Lord will take what was once I just lost my train of thought. The Lord will take a problem and make it Amen. Amen. Next slide, please. A, a plan that exists in someone's head will not get will not be achieved. A plan needs to be shared. A plan needs to be discussed. It clarifies everyone's expectations and their responsibilities. You clarify the timeline and the cost. And you communicate early and often. Next slide. I'll give you an example. The Uganda Trade School. That is a project that is a strategic objective. I'm sorry, the red doesn't show as well here. And on the right side, it says, here, here is the crisis and here is the need. So now you're communicating why. It's not just to keep construction workers employed. It's to have an impact for the kingdom. Next slide, please.
So this is the statement of impact. This is what will happen when we build a trade school. Kati chino chechi gendo kubeda owe tunaba tutadewo e somero lino e di gendo kuyambaba naba fe kubye mikono. We would be able to train young people to have a career and a job. Those who don't know Christ can be exposed to Jesus. And so we build the kingdom by building people. So this is how you would state an impact. And we would call education a high impact. It's, it's what we want to do. Next slide. Oh, there was one more. So then you have a timeline. And you have all the steps. Now if you show this to people, they'll know what you're trying to accomplish. Why? What impact? When? D tunatukiriza D and what's the cost? Era chigenda kumalawo mutemwachi. So let me go back to the beginning. Kanzire yoko wetu atandikide. Someone I think it was Ben this morning that referenced. Uh, Pastor Ben aina chia yogedde wano. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Bakoli se chisoko kuvyada kwenyolu soka. In verse 16. No nyo rekumi no mukaga. Paul did not have plans that were made according to human standards. Paul made plans according to what the Lord told him. He knew the cost. He knew the risk. Yet he, yet he went ahead anyway. And we give God the glory for what he has accomplished for Paul. Let me pray for you. Father God, we come before you as mere humans. But Lord, we know you want to work in our hearts and in our minds. We dedicate time, Lord, to prayer and fasting. We want to hear your voice. We want to listen to you. We want to know your plans. And Lord, we want to be obedient in carrying out those plans. Be with us through your Holy Spirit as we move as we make things happen, as we acquire resources, and we accomplish your mission. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen.